A PBS staple, celebrity chef Martin Yan has entertained and educated millions of people across the planet for more than 40 years through his television series, Yan Can Cook. Now, the 73-year-old is bringing his talents and expertise to Las Vegas with a brand new restaurant. And this week, for Nevada Week in person, we caught up with Chef Yan as he took part in the Vegas PBS virtual cooking event, The Great Vegas Recipe. Support for Nevada Week in person is provided by Senator William H. Hernstadt and additional supporting sponsors. You are set to open your very first Las Vegas Strip restaurant in the fall of this year, MY Asia. Why is it your first and why now? Well, for the longest time, for years, when I do the Yankin Cook Show on PBS, we travel roaming around the world and I spend about 275 days a year around. So if I open a restaurant, if I'm not able to spend more time in the kitchen, taking care of the menu and creating something new and say hello to the customer, I shouldn't be doing it. But now, I no longer travel like I used to. My wife said, stay put. And in fact, I'm calling my wife, I'm gonna move to Las Vegas. Oh. Is, yeah. Are you being serious? I am yep. serious. I, I tell them, I said, let, let us sell the house. And uh, we sell the house over there, and we can buy two houses in Las Vegas. Well, it's very true. <laughs> uh, you're moving from California. No, no, of course. Not, not in fact, definitely not the, uh, the, the Celine Dion's uh, the house. But some of the house that is, I think is very... That's the reason why a lot of my friends are moving to Las Vegas. Okay. Because you got wonderful people, good entertainment. Everything is available, but it's affordable. That's the reason why... Everybody moved to Las Vegas. And perhaps All you could be sport. Celine Dion's neighbor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the sport team are moving to Vegas and everybody's moving there. So I want everybody, I want MY China to be packed day in and day out because we want to entertain them with food and wonderful flavor and aroma. And from what I understand, it was the coronavirus pandemic that kind of gave you a pause from all that yeah, traveling. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. when you decided, OK, maybe I should open this Vegas restaurant. Um, talking about MY China in San Francisco, was COVID why that closed down? Well, we closed temporary, but we'll be reopening in Chinatown. And hopefully one day we'll open MY China right here in Vegas very soon. Okay, so that is breaking news. You're going yeah, to reopen yeah. MY China yeah, in yeah, San Francisco. Yes, yeah, yes. Any idea when? Uh, probably uh, in the late fall. The reason is because we're in a fourth floor. Okay. And then they during the lockdown, nobody would go up to the fourth floor. We cannot do takeout. We cannot do a lot of things. But now in Vegas, we can do everything we want. Because Las Vegas is wide open. Everybody from around the world come to Las Vegas. So that's why if everybody's coming over here, I will be here to entertain all of you to come to Las Vegas. How is MY Asia going to differ from MY China? And how will the restaurant differ from all the competition on the Strip? Well, they're all my good friends. I just tell all my good friends like uh, Bobby Frey and Emerald and uh, all of these people, give me a break, okay? <laughs> Take about three days off a week. So allow me the space and uh, an opportunity to capture some of your audience and your customer. But anyway, they're all my good friends. Oh, I bet they're a little yeah. intimidated by you coming here. No, nobody got intimidated until I pick up one of these anyway. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, from what I understand, you're going to be putting on a little bit of a show, though. Yes, you know, I love entertainment. I've been teaching cooking class. I always tell people, you know, food is basically entertainment. Food is art. It's magic. But also food is entertainment. I want to entertain people with good food, wonderful service, and wonderful energy. I want to create something that people return to the home and remember they have ate it in my Asia. So in my Asia. an open kitchen, yeah. and you're going to be doing what kind of performing as you cook? I will show everybody. I am training all my chef how to bone a chicken, break down a chicken in 18 seconds. <laughs> you still do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge some of my good friends on the strip. Can you bone a chicken in 18 seconds? <laughs> I practice every night. In fact, I came over here and I stayed in Paris. Uh -huh. And I actually bought a whole bunch of chicken last night. And I practice. You don't believe me, you go to the 
you go to my room and check it out. I got a lot of chicken carcass in my suitcase, okay? <laughs> but anyway, I'm just joking. But the thing is, food is about entertainment. Food is about not only nourishing, but about bringing people closer together. Food breaks down, breaks down barriers. Well, congratulations on that restaurant opening and also on the James Beard Foundation Lifetime Achievement Award, which yeah, you received. Right, right here, right Where here, right is here. your medal? This is the medal right here. You received it this month. Yeah, just a few days ago. In recognition of a lifetime of work that, quote, had a positive and long-lasting impact on the way we eat, cook, and or think about food in America, end quote. You were born in China, immigrated to Canada, and then the United States. What does it mean to you to know you've had that kind of impact on this country? Well, food has no national or international boundary. Food brings everybody together. It breaks down barrier, it's an equalizer. So I'm so fortunate that through food, I can reach a lot of people, millions and millions of people around the world. And the people from all of the, from Dubai, from India, from, from England, they come up and say, oh, you know, watch you when I was young, when I was growing up, I told myself, when you were young, I was also very young. <laughs> and we all grew up together. Right. <laughs> yes. Uh, speaking uh -huh. about your roots in food and, and someone achieving success, yeah. we often hear about hunger and how hungry a person is to achieve something. And that's referencing how much they really want it. But in your case, in China as a child, hunger and, and famine and starvation were an issue. What do you remember of China as a child? How did it impact you? When I was growing up, it was the most turbulent, the most challenging time in modern Chinese history. A lot of famine, a lot of people, died of starvation. Everything is rationed. We literally have a quarter of a cup of oil a month per person. Entire month, one quarter of a cup, and two pounds of meat. So that's why I supposed to be this tall, because I, I, I didn't, when I was growing up, I don't have enough protein. And uh, now actually, that's the reason why I put on a high heel shoe here. Oh. So I look just as tall as you. Well, I do but have actually, high heels But actually, normally on. this is my height. <laughs> but anyway, but anyway the, the thing is, I, I always believe food, is the most um, important equalizer to bring all of us together. And today is a classic example. I work with all the wonderful young students, um, young chefs all over the world. And this way, it gives me the opportunity, not only I can share with them my passion and my skill, but also I can learn from them. And it was that need though for food that uh, helped you determine, I want to make sure I have access to food and, yeah. and I'm involved in that industry. Yes, yeah, so because when you're close to food, you never go hungry, you know. I'll be ready, I'm, I'm happy to just work in the restaurant just to have food, but people insist to pay me, so I, I can't resist. You don't gotta be polite, when people give you something, you take it graciously. So when you offer me, I will take it. But the thing is, I personally, I love food, I love to cook, I love to share. Food is about sharing and educating, yep. and when you first started cooking in the United States on television in the early 1980s, how familiar did you find Americans were with Chinese food and Asian food? I remember when I first arrived in America, there's only about two or 3,000 Chinese restaurants. Now, the last count, 52,000 Chinese restaurants. Wow. And probably half of them in Las Vegas. I mean, there's so many Chinese and Asian restaurants. You've got Thai restaurant, Cambodian restaurant, Indian restaurant, Filipino restaurant, a lot of Chinese restaurants. So I think it become a main staple, a main diet. Everybody go to Asian restaurant, Chinese restaurant. I go, I love Italian food. I love uh, uh, Japanese food. I love uh, Hispanic, Mexican food. I love to taste everything. Because every time I taste something, I learn. And when you talk about the growth of yeah. Asian restaurants in the yeah. U.S., how much do you think you played a part in that? I have no idea. But if you travel around the country, you see about three or 4,000 Chinese restaurants with my picture on the wall. So you go in, you say, oh, I'm Chef Martinian's cousin. You know what? 50% off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just joking. But the thing is, uh, I have traveled all over. A lot of time, I would go into the restaurant and cook with the chef and then I'll take a picture and they put it on a wall. So, uh, and, and then uh, every time I go over there, free meal. So I hope, uh, I, I hope I put my picture in every single celebrity's restaurant, and then when I walk in, I don't have to pay. 
If you think about the idea that because you have educated so many Americans about food and thus culture, um, perhaps promoting um, acceptance and tolerance of the Asian culture, do you believe that you have helped in that aspect? And then uh, we'll answer that first. I, I hope so. Uh, because as I said, food has no national, international boundary. The more we, pe we understand through food, we understand each other's culture, heritage, and lifestyle, then we accept each other. We respect each other. Because when you know somebody, just like your neighbor, you don't know your neighbor, you don't know how to get to close to them. But you, once you get to know them, then you become good friends. And I hope through food, we bring all, my, uh, all the people that I reach, all the people I touch, bring them together full, delicious food, healthy, delicious, fresh food. Because of how high profile you are and well known you are, what kind of responsibility did you feel, if any, when there was a rise in anti-Asian sentiment because of COVID? I, 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 I truly believe- To help in, in that, combating right. it. Right, to combat that, first of all, I raised my words and tell them, hey, look, first of all, this country is a melting pot. People from all over the world together here, there is very few native people except the Native American, right? Indian. They are here first, but everybody else come from all over the world. And let us learn to respect and accept each other. And food is about sharing. So through food, I tell people, hey, look, I use food, I use uh, cheese, I use all kinds of ingredients. Let us sit down in a dining table. We never enemy, we never fight. We're all friends. As part of the Great Vegas Recipe, you have been showing and teaching these Clark County School District yeah. students a lot. What do you hope that they take away most from their interactions with you? Well, food is about love and passion, just like any professional. If you love what you do, if you're passionate about, you will have a great career. That's the reason why I always encourage and also remind everybody with a slogan. If Yan can cook, so can you, to all the young students, to all the young chefs. If I can do it, you can do it. What are the ingredients of a good chef? Last question. The last question is, the ingredient is always, always be curious. Very important. And I always are curious, always never stop learning. Always want to find out new flavor, new product, new ingredient. Like today, I learned from many something I normally don't use. So I'm learning from everybody. I'm learning from them too. We all exchange, we all communicate, we all improve, we all elevate ourselves in, in terms of our, as a professional. Chef Martin Yan, thank you so much for your time and uh, looking forward to you perhaps moving to Las Vegas in addition to opening that new restaurant. In fact, right after this, I'm gonna call my wife. <laughs> and I said, I have made up my mind. We gotta move here. You're gonna have realtors <laughs> after you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> All right, thank you again. To see the entire Great Vegas Recipe digital series, go to our website, vegaspbs.org slash greatvegasrecipe. And as always, Thank you for joining us for Nevada Week in Person.